Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to European Higher Education Fair Indonesia 2020 goes online. This is institution webinar series. My name is Lukman and I'm going to be moderating this webinar. This first session will be presented by the representative from UCL, University College London. Please stay tuned until the end of this webinar because we will have a Q&A session. If you have any questions about the presentation or anything related to UCL, you can submit your question in our YouTube's comment section anytime throughout the presentation. Please welcome Ms. Hannah Lek from UCL. Time is yours. <laughs> Hello, hi, thank you for that welcome. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for, for joining me today. Um, yeah, normally in normal times, I would be in Indonesia at this time of year to attend this event in person. So sadly, we can't do that this year, but yeah, I'm so pleased we still have the opportunity to connect virtually. Um, so let's crack on with the presentation. I'll just share my screen. Great. Uh, yeah, well, my name's Hannah. Um, I work for the international office at UCL. I've been there for about eight years now. Can't believe it's been quite that long. Um, but for most of that time, my focus has been our recruitment of students in Southeast Asia. Um, so yeah, very familiar with your region, with Indonesia. Um, and the purpose of this presentation today is to give you a really good overview about UCL, some insights into what makes us a little bit different, the opportunities that you might have, um, and I'll touch on applications as well. So kind of the key things that we're looking for when we assess applications um, and then there, yes there will be time for questions at the end so I hope you find it useful. Great so I'm sure as you're starting to do your research into universities and attending events like this you know you've got so much choice um, and lots of fantastic universities to explore and to choose from and um, so reassuring I think to know that you know UCL is consistently really highly ranked in the various rankings that there are and um, probably the one we're most proud of is QS that ranks the top 10 universities in the world and we are number 10 so you can be confident that a degree from UCL is really going to be internationally recognized it's really going to serve you well. So whatever you decide to do after your studies, whether it's to return to Indonesia or to move elsewhere in the UK or throughout the world, um, th that UCL degree is, is going to really help you for your next step. So I'm going to give you a little overview about UCL, what makes us a little bit different. Um, and to start with, it's our world impact. So yes, we're attracting the best students from around the world. We're attracting the best academic staff as well. So they're really focused on um, their research that's really going to make an impact in the world. And we really want to make sure that that research is available to our students as well. So we have their schemes on the Connect curriculum that enables students to have access to this world leading research and to get involved, to work with researchers and to get involved in all the exciting research opportunities that we have. Okay, so this is just an example of what some of our researchers have been up to um, in the past few months. Um, so the academic voice at UCL does get into the press all the time, every day. Um, so journalists come to our academics for opinions on politics, climate change, COVID, all kinds of different things. Um, so yeah, everyone knows that UCL academics, they are at the forefront of what they're researching and they have key things to say and yeah, journalists really do seek out their opinions. So UCL is known as London's global university, and that's for a number of different reasons. So yes, we attract the best students from around the world, the best academic staff. So our campus is very global, with students from over 150 different countries. And we also have very central London location as well. And London itself is, is very cosmopolitan. So you're in a, a great place to explore, not just kind of British ideas and or European culture, but it's very much um, a global focus as well. So I mentioned, yep, 10th in the world, so definitely one that we're really proud of, um, particularly that QS ranking. 
Okay, now I want to just give you a little bit of background and history about UCL. Um, I promise it's interesting. <laughs> so we are definitely the, what we would say the home of disruptive thinking. We do want to do things a bit differently. We do want to shake things up a bit. You know, we're not just learning what distinguished academics have taught us about these key subjects. You know, we really want to develop our own and new ideas, approach topics and research areas in new and interesting ways, have lots of great collaboration across the university and just discuss discover some really interesting things. And this is really right from our foundings. Um, so this figure on the screen here is a man called Jeremy Bentham. And he was um, a kind of philosopher, social reformer, who was alive around the time of UCL's founding. Um, and his key ideas, key philosophy that he's known for is utilitarianism, which means the greatest good for the greatest number. And that's one of UCL's kind of founding philosophies, founding principles. Um, so that's this idea of opening up education to students regardless of their background. So we were the first university to accept uh, women in equal terms as men. And we were the first to accept students regardless of their social class and their religious background as well. And that was quite um, unusual <laughs> at the time. Um, and not everyone was happy about it. Um, but we definitely keep that spirit alive today through new ways of doing things, new programs and pioneering research. So that kind of disruption to education, doing things a bit differently has been very much um, what we've been doing since our creation in 1826. So yeah, we're a large university by UK standards, offering lots of different subject areas and, and lots of research areas too, but we do have a focus. So all of our research is focused on one of these six areas. So these are the key challenges that all of our research is directed in. Um, so that means that it has a lot of impact by having this focus. And it does mean that all across the university, there's some great collaboration. So, for example, in global health, you know, you're not just going to be having medics, but you're going to be having um, pharmacists, lawyers, entrepreneurs, you know, how do we get um, or you know, social scientists as well, all working collaboratively to solve these global problems. So it makes it a really exciting and interesting place to be. And lots going on on our campus at the moment as well. Um, so our campus is open right now to students, but um, you know, unfortunately, because of COVID times, um, kind of contact hours are a little bit shorter at the moment. And yes, yeah, not quite as vibrant as it normally would be. But hopefully by the time you come to UCL, it will be more or less back to normal. Um, so yeah, in terms of our facilities and resources, it really is fantastic. And um, this image on the right here is our new student centre, which opened last year. Um, so it's a really beautiful central space um, with a thousand study spaces. So it's a really great place to come if you're kind of working on a project with a group of students. Um, you don't want to be in the library, you want a bit more of an open space. That's a, that's a great place to go. And then on the left here, this is an image of our new campus and um, that's opening very soon in East London, which is on the former Olympic Park site. And um, it is going to have quite a focus on um, technology and very much at, at the master's level. So it would just be a, a small subject area, at least initially. Um, but whatever subject you're studying, you will be able to use their resources, their facilities and enjoy the space there. So what can you study at UCL? So it's yeah, too many to say really. So at the undergraduate level, we have over 200 different programs. And at the master's level, we have 400 different programs. And then we have lots of research PhD opportunities as well. So far too many to tell you about today, but they all fit within one of these subject areas on the screen. So you can see we do really offer the spectrum. So from arts and humanities through to social sciences, laws, engineering, medicine, so hopefully within this list here, um, you'll see ones that kind of seem particularly interesting to you. Um, so really popular ones with our N um, Indonesian students would be the built environments. So that's where we offer architecture, but also things like urban design, city planning, smart cities, that kind of thing. Engineering sciences is also very popular and education studies. So we do offer kind of teacher training, teaching English and also things like um, linguistics that tends to be quite popular with Indonesian students as well. But yeah, hopefully something on the screen that sounds interesting to you. But what links all of our programs is that we're really teaching you how to think not what to think, you know, really helping you to develop these skills to be an independent, critical thinker um, so that you're really having these skills that are going to be valuable to you beyond your degree. So your UCL degree will really want to be really valuable. The skills you're really using every day still in 10, 20 years time. 
So there's a real emphasis on that critical thinking. Um, and what's key to that is small class sizes. So we actually have the second best staff student ratio in the UK, it's typically one to 10. So you will still have large classes, but in your smaller kind of seminar groups, tutorials, you'll be in much smaller groups. So it's a really great um, kind of conducive, small environment, friendly environment for you to develop your ideas and your skills um, and to connect with your fellow classmates and academic staff too. So it's a, a really fantastic small learning environment. So, you know, we'd obviously love you to come to UCL, work really hard, and really enjoy your time with us, really make the most of it and get involved in the UCL community. So while we are looking for academically very bright students, um, we are also looking for, you know, those students who are going to get involved in the student community, who are going to join clubs and societies and, and really enjoy student life at UCL. And we're in a fantastic um, position for you to be able to do this. So I'm sure some of you are familiar with London already, or you know, perhaps not so much, but just to give you an overview of where we are, you can see us at the, at the bottom of the screen here. Um, so we're located in an area called Bloomsbury. It's known as the literary heart of the city. Um, and that's because famous writers like Charles Dickens and Virginia Woolf used to live here. And we're very close to the British Library and the British Museum. And just to give you an idea of scale, so you can see the River Thames in the background here, so where Tate Modern is. And it might look far on the map, but it probably takes less than 30 minutes to walk from UCL to the river. So the centre of London really is quite compact. And you know, if you're on your walk from UCL to the river, you'd go past the British Museum and um, some other key sites such as Covent Garden, the Theatre District, the Royal Courts of Justice, um, Oxford Street, one of the busiest shopping streets. So yeah, you will get to know central London really well. It's really easy to just walk around. <laughs> um, obviously, public transport is pretty good too. Um, so yeah, definitely in our Indonesian students do say to us that within a few weeks of being on campus, they've walked more than they have in months back home, just because it is really easy to get around. Um, and one of my favourite things about the area is that it's a very green space as well. So you can see on the screen there are various public parks and gardens, but just off the screen as well is Regent's Park. So it's one of the biggest parks in London. It's where a London Zoo is, there's an open air theatre in the summer, so I think we're really lucky to have the central London location, but still have access to lots of green space as well. And that community feel is really key at UCL. So we are lucky to have the central London location, but to still be a campus based university. So, you know, we're very different from a traditional campus. So, for example, we're quite different from Universitas Indonesia. So we're not in an enclosed area. We're very much part of the city, but almost all of the UCL buildings are in one area. So as you're walking around Bloomsbury, you know, most of the buildings and the students you're seeing um, are going to be related to UCL. So it's yeah, really nice environment to be in. And then I mentioned those small class sizes as well. So that just really means you will get to know the um, other students on your program and the academic staff in your department really well. Um, and you'll be able to get involved in all kinds of different activities and really enjoy your time with us. And our accommodation as well is mostly within 15 minutes walk of campus. So again, that's quite unusual really to be a city center university, but still have our accommodation um, right nearby as well. Um, and we do guarantee it for first year students. There are a few conditions, but yeah, primarily if it's your first time in London and you apply before our deadlines, um, then we can guarantee you UCL accommodation. Now, a little bit about the UCL community and just kind of the scale that we're on. Um, so, yeah, as I did mention, we are one of the larger universities in the UK, but because we have that campus and because we have the small class sizes, we do have that strong community feel. Um, and we're very international. So 48% of our students are international, um, coming from over 150 different countries. So when you are in your small classes, maybe a group of 10 students, you know, nearly half of the class are going to be from all over the world. So we think that really enhances your studies. They're going to have different viewpoints, different approaches to the subject, different experiences. Um, so it's really enriching your studies in that way. And it also means you're going to have a great network of students across the world once you graduate. So you can see at the top of the screen here, we've got over 300,000 alumni worldwide. Um, and our Indonesian Alumni Society are fantastic. They're quite active. They get together regularly. Um, yeah, so they're a, they're a great bunch. So yeah, you'll be part of that as well, even after you finished UCL. 
Um, in terms of our academic staff as well, 35% international. So, you know, these brilliant researchers, they're not only attracted to the name of UCL and our central London location, but they're attracted to our resources, our facilities, our uh, research funding, and just the opportunities that they have in a, in a larger university and those connections they can make with other staff and other researchers across different disciplines. And we're very well connected with other institutions worldwide as well. So over 150 agreements for kind of study abroad. And it's something we really encourage. So you know, 32% of students last year did spend some time overseas at one of our partner institutions. So that might be for a summer school or it might be a semester or perhaps a whole academic year. And um, so, again, adding another experience, another dimension to your studies. And that's really great. You know, if you're perhaps unsure about going to the UK or the US, you know, you could still come to the UK, have that shorter length of degree, but have a, a briefer experience in the US, perhaps. Or if you wanted to explore another part of Asia or Europe, um, you could have that opportunity while still graduating uh, with a UK degree. So something to bear in mind um, if you're looking for that extra dimension to your studies. Okay, so a big part of university life in the UK is joining clubs and societies. Um, so obviously, you know, your academic studies must come first, um, but it is a fantastic opportunity to make new friends outside of your subject area, to try new things, to explore your interests, or perhaps continue what you already do. Um, so we don't have classes on Wednesday afternoons. So that's your opportunity to perhaps play sports if that's what you're interested in and play competitively against other universities or just to take part in other interests that you have. Um, we do have a fantastic Indonesian society as well. So they do all kinds of um, film nights, um, trips to theatres, um, celebrate key festivals. Um, they're very active and yeah, they're a really great bunch of students as well. And at the moment, I believe we have around 170 Indonesian students at UCL. Probably at the postgraduate level, doing a master's degree, it's probably about 70-30 split um, between postgraduate and undergraduate. Um, and the numbers are, are growing all the time, which we're really pleased about. So yeah, although you'll be meeting students from all over the world, I think it is nice to know that there will be a core cool group of fellow Indonesians. So you will be able to you know, talk about home and seek out all the Indonesian food in London, um, of which there are a lot. Um, so yeah, do explore and do enjoy. <laughs> um, and as we are in central London, you know, obviously we do have fantastic facilities on our campus but you can you know London is your classroom you can study anywhere get inspiration anywhere so from traditional London the kind of images you would expect to the exciting new things that are going on as well now we know coming to the university you know particularly if it's your first time overseas or significant time overseas um, then you might have some concerns some worries so we do want to reassure you that student support and well-being is a really big part of what we offer at UCL you know we don't just want you to come to UCL and you know do okay we want you to really thrive at UCL to really enjoy your time with us get a good degree and feel really supported so we do that in a number of ways and um, we have various mentoring schemes so kind of peer-to-peer -peer mentoring um, we have a really great international uh, student support team. So they do a one week orientation at the beginning of the year when you first join us. So they help you with the practical things like visas and opening bank accounts, but also kind of social events and kind of getting you familiar with um, studying and study skills in the UK. And then our wellbeing team offer all kinds of kind of formal support should you need some help kind of health wise or with counselling. Um, but they're also there just to help to create a culture at UCL where we're all really comfortable talking about our wellbeing and, you know, helping our peers, helping our fellow students. So, you know, if we, if we notice someone struggling a little bit, we know how to help them or where to direct them to get help. Um, so there is that culture of, yeah, of helping each other and having good, strong wellbeing. Um, so there's lots of awareness raising days and lots of initiatives that the wellbeing team do. And, and definitely the therapy dogs is everyone's favorite. <laughs> so it can be a little bit chaotic, um, but sometimes there are days on campus when they bring the therapy dogs in and um, yeah, everyone really enjoys that. <laughs> And um, yeah, as an international student, as part of your student visa, 
you do pay a fee that enables you to access our national health service. Um, so that will be covered while you're studying with us. Um, and we do have um, doctors on campus, but depending on where your accommodation is, you might be registered with one a bit closer to where you're living. Um, but yeah, in terms of health and wellbeing, we, we've definitely got you covered. So thinking ahead now, so obviously, you know, you're starting your university career or going to for that master's degree because you're ambitious, because you want to do well in your life and go on to really interesting things. And, that, and that's really important to us as well. So a big part of our time as well as supporting you during your studies is making sure you feel really prepared for that next step after UCL. So we have a quite a large careers team um, that do all kinds of things to help you with that. So they run all kinds of careers fairs throughout the year. We have things like sector themed weeks. So there might be a week all about working in banking finance or a week all about working for charities, NGOs. So it's an opportunity for you to go along to events, meet with employers, network, go to skills workshops, just explore that um, career path to see if it's something interested to you interesting to you um, and the career service can also have um, that one-on-one -on -one time with you help you develop your ideas do practice interviews with you help you with your cv your resume and um, they do all kinds of coaching offering internships um, the list is endless really but I, I would say when it comes to careers it is something you have to be a little bit proactive about um, you know you're not going to be made to go to these events or you know it is up to you to take the initiative to go along to the events to sign up for workshops and fairs and that kind of things but yeah do be reassured that all of these uh, resources are there for you if you seek them out Okay, so for the final 10 minutes, I just want to um, talk briefly about um, how to get into UCL, what we're looking for and, and the application process. Um, so yeah, I'd say that the typical UCL students are brave thinkers, you know, they're not afraid to think to, about the subjects in new and interesting ways. Um, they have a global perspective, they're curious, open minded, and independent and resilient as well. Um, you know, education in the UK is very much about critical thinking, you developing your ideas, your approaches to the subject. Um, so yeah, it does require a little bit of independence and resilience as well. Okay, so I'll start with undergraduate applications first. So if you're in high school at the moment and you're wanting to study abroad for your undergraduate, your bachelor's degree, um, the application process to UCL is the same for all UK universities. So at the undergraduate level, you don't apply to the universities directly. You make one application through the UCAS website, and that one application can be sent to up to five different universities or courses. So it is a bit more limited at the undergraduate level. You could only apply for five UK universities, but it's much more streamlined. It's quite a, an, an, an easy way to apply. Um, and then there are key deadlines on the screen to bear in mind so that again this is the same for all UK universities and um, with the key deadline to bear in mind is the 15th of January each year which is the, the key final deadline. So what we're looking for at the undergraduate level is either um, A levels, so we're looking for high achievement in three A levels or high achievement in the IB diploma, but we also do accept quite a number of other international qualifications as well, so for the, from the US, for example, but lots throughout Europe and beyond. Um, unfortunately, we don't accept the local Indonesian high school qualification for direct entry into our bachelor's degree. Um, but if you do well in your high school um, at, in Indonesia, then you may be eligible to join our one year foundation program, which is like a preparation year before you can take on a, on a bachelor's degree. And I'll, I'll touch upon that in a moment. So, yeah, as well as high grades, um, we also look for a personal statement, like a motivation letter. And this is really, really key. If you're applying to the competitive universities like UCL, you know, we are lucky that we receive a high number of applications from really well qualified students. So it is the personal statement that really helps us to distinguish between the different students and to see who, you know, which ones would be the right fit. So in the personal statement, we want it to be mostly academically focused. So 75% of the personal statement should be all about why you want to study law, for example. 
Um, so we want to know why you want to study law. What about is it that's interesting to you? What particular area? What has informed this decision? And we're hoping that you've done something beyond the classroom related to it as well. So it might have been some further reading you've done. There might have been some cases you've been following in the news. You may have done some work. And there might have been a change in the law or legislation in your country that you found really interesting and you found a bit more about that. So, you know, really do demonstrate um, that you've gone that little bit further to explore that subject area. So, yeah, at the undergraduate level, 75% focuses on the programme you're applying for. And then the rest of it, the other 25%, that's when you could tell us about your hobbies, your interests, that kind of thing. Um, but try to keep that quite brief. You know, mostly we're looking for your academic motivation. That's the really key thing. Um, the UCAS website, and as well as UCL, has lots of advice about the personal statement. Um, but, yeah, this, this is the key thing to bear in mind. And then I mentioned our foundation program. Um, so yes, we do have that if you're doing the local Indonesian high school qualification. Um, so if you are interested in our foundation program, there's information on the screen here and you can ask questions about that if you have any at the end. Okay, graduate applications. So graduate applications in the UK, you can make them directly to the university. So you can do it online through the UCL website. Um, each program has a slightly different deadline, but most of them are around June time. But we always encourage early applications because we do make offers on a rolling basis. So it definitely does happen that some of the more popular programs may become full before the deadline. So definitely do the get application in as early as you can. So with the application, we're also looking for a personal statement, that motivation letter. So that's you telling us, for example, um, you know, why you want to do mechanical engineering. You know, what about it? Is it that's interesting to you? What particular area? Why you want to do it at UCL? Why at graduate level? Why in the UK? And a bit about your career aspirations as well. So, you know, why would this degree be really beneficial to you? How does it kind of fit into your plans? Um, so, yes. And then we also ask for the contact details for two referees. Um, we do prefer that at least one of those referees is, is an academic reference. And then the second one can be a professional reference. Um, and then we do ask for an English language certificate as well. So IELTS is probably the most common, but we do accept a variety and you can view those on our website as well. So in terms of entry requirements, all of our master's degrees either require an upper second class UK bachelor's degree or a second class UK bachelor's degree. And this is the equivalent on the screen here. So we're looking for either a 3.0 GPA from in Indonesia or a 3.3 GPA. So it will depend on the subject that you're applying for. So when we make our decision, we'll first look at your grades. So if you have finished university, we'll have your final grades. If you're still in your final year of university, we'd like to see the transcript of the results you've achieved so far so that we can see that you're on track to meet those entry requirements. Um, and then we use that in collaboration with your references and your motivation letter to decide whether we want to make you an offer. And I think there is sometimes a confusion between the difference between conditional and unconditional offers. So basically, if you apply and you've made a really strong application, you meet all of our entry requirements, you know, we'd love to have you on our course, then we'll give you an unconditional offer. Um, if you apply, you've made a really strong application, um, but you haven't finished university yet, so you haven't met that final GPA, or you haven't taken your English language test just yet, then we will give you a conditional offer. So that means you've got a place on the program on the condition that you do meet our entry requirements before you start at UCL. And then once you've met those offer conditions, then your offer is updated from conditional to unconditional. So a conditional offer, it's still a very much a real offer. You know, we're never going to take that away from you. It's your offer. Um, but there are conditions attached and you absolutely do have to meet the requirements before you join us at UCL. Um, it is possible to defer your entry as well. So if you get an offer from UCL and then it's just getting a bit too close to the deadline and you haven't quite sorted your English or perhaps you're still applying for a scholarship, um, it is possible to defer your entry by one year. Um, so joining us the following September, but no more than one year. So you do have that flexibility as well. Okay, so I think that's coming to an end now. So we'll come into questions in a moment. But yeah, just to summarize, really. Um, yeah, if you're thinking about UCL, um, yeah, 
great choice. <laughs> so I think the key things to bear in mind at UCL is that we're very much internationally recognised. You've got lots of opportunities in terms of what you want to study. You've got the central London location, the campus university, small class sizes, lots of ways to help you with your well-being, enjoying your time with us and a fantastic career service for, for those next steps. Um, I'm conscious that I didn't talk about fees and scholarships. So just very, very briefly, because I'm sure there'll be questions about that. Um, so the tuition fees do vary for each program. So it's the easiest thing is just to look on the UCL website for the program you're interested in it, and it will tell you the tuition fee. Um, in terms of scholarships, um, mostly our students from Indonesia will be with LPDP or Chevening. Uh, we do have a few scholarships at UCL, um, but they are much more limited than more tuition fee discounts rather than full scholarships. Um, but I can give you more detail about that if there are questions. So thank you very much. I know that's lots of information to take in. Um, so yeah, really appreciate you joining me today um, and happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you very much for the impressive presentation. It's really interesting to know all the information about UCL. Now we are down to yes. our question and answer session. So if our watchers have any questions, you can type the them down on our YouTube's comment section. Let's get started to the first one. How is the PhD application process? Do we have to hmm. uh, search for our professor or how is the application process for that? Great question. Yeah, so PhD is a little bit different and there are two ways to apply. So there are some programs where you're doing your PhD, you're supporting an existing area of research at UCL, and it's a bit more straightforward to just make an application to UCL. So that's probably the first step is to look on our website for the list of the PhD programs. And if there's an area of research that matches yours, you can just apply and it's straightforward through the website. Um, but then probably most common is the speculative application. So that's where, you know, you look at that list of our existing PhD programs and doesn't quite match your area of research, not quite what you want to study. So then you would make kind of an independent application. And that is where you do need to find a supervisor first. So we've got lots of guidance about this on our website, but what we really recommend is that you do take the time to kind of identify a supervisor whose areas of research most aligns to yours. Um, and you can just send them an email initially, just saying, you know, I'm interested in doing a PhD at UCL. This is what I want to focus on. Um, this is what I want to research. This is why I would, I'd love you to be my supervisor. Would that be a possibility? Um, so once you get that relationship going, then you write your research proposal. And only at that point do you submit your application. So we have those two routes for PhD. So either the direct application, if your area of research is listed, or the speculative application. Okay, thank you. The next one. Is it possible to take a postgraduate program that doesn't relate to the undergraduate? Yeah, definitely. It, it does depend. So I would say probably the things like, um, so some of the sciences, some of the, the medicine and the more clinical programs do require you to have a background in that subject. But lots of programs, particularly in the social sciences, are much more flexible. So it's definitely possible to go into a different area. Um, so it will be clear in the entry requirements you know, what they would be expecting from students. But I would say for kind of arts and humanities, social sciences, um, it is much more flexible in terms of the backgrounds of the students. Um, but the ones, you know, where you're going straight into a master's degree in, you know, in physics, for example, um, you know, you would have to have a strong background in that. So yeah, the kind of clinical or more science and engineering based programs, you would have to have a, a background in that area. Okay, thank you. Now let's talk a little bit about living in London. Can you tell us the average living cost there? Absolutely. So, I mean, definitely London is, is an expensive city, particularly compared to other parts of the UK. So it's definitely really important to think about it before you apply, just to make sure it is a realistic option for you. Um, but I do think if you're ever going to live in London, being a student is absolutely the best time <laughs> in terms of um, the cost of accommodation, all the discounts you get as a student, um, you know, you don't you get lots of discounts on public transport, food accommodation, all of that. Um, in terms of living costs, it, it does vary, but I would say kind of UCL average costs are about £200 a week. Um, but it, yeah, it, it does depend on if you've got your own room, if you're in a shared flat, 
um, if you eat out all the time, that kind of thing. Um, so it does depend on lifestyle a little bit as well. Um, but we do have um, like a lifestyle kind of calculator on our website um, so that you can, can work out that kind of thing. So I'd say, yeah, it is expensive. So you definitely have to budget and, and be careful with your money. But it's, I think, less expensive than people first think. Okay, thank you. The next one. Is there any fully funded uh, scholarship for undergraduate or postgraduate from UCL? So unfortunately, we don't offer full scholarships. Um, so we do have some, it's very limited at undergraduate, there's more available at postgraduate level. Um, but where we have them, it's, it's mostly tuition fee discounts rather than full scholarships or contributions to living costs. Um, so as I said, most of our Indonesian students uh, would be on a scholarship with LPDP or Chevening, um, definitely the most common there. Um, but if you do want to apply for a UCL scholarship, um, you would usually do that after you've received an offer for a UCL degree program. Um, and we do have um, a scholarships page on our website. And from there, you can filter your country, your level of study and the program you're interested in. And a list of scholarships will come up, ones that you might be eligible for. So and you can definitely look at, ahead to see what you might be eligible for there. Um, but yeah, please do be aware that it, it is limited um, it, and it won't be a full scholarship, unfortunately. Okay, the next one. Uh, we're still in the pandemic time. Will mm. the 2021 academic year be called online? And do you offer full online or virtual programs? Good question. Well, I think I need a, a crystal ball <laughs> for 2021. <laughs> well, it's all sounding quite positive, isn't it, with um, the vaccine? So... Yeah, so how it's working at the moment um, is we've got a combination. So our campus is open and students are having face-to-face -face teaching, but it is much more limited than normal. So we're guaranteeing two hours of teaching um, on campus for those students who are on campus and then everything else is online. Um, but we definitely do have students who haven't been able to travel to the UK for, for whatever reason. Um, so we have made sure that all of their learning is available online to them. Um, so we've kind of got that hybrid model at the moment. So we can definitely do that for 2021 if necessary, but we're really hoping things will be by that time back to, back, back to normal um, and we will be fully back on campus. But, um, you know, what we have learned means that we can be flexible. You know, if things change, if plans change, we can take things online, offline. Um, but I think, yeah, we're, as much as online is fantastic, I think we're all looking forward to having that face-to-face -face being back in real life um, and learning together <laughs> yeah finger cross okay yeah <laughs> uh, next question since you handle most of the southeast asia students uh what do you think would be a challenge for us once we move there oh good question well i think i would say there's one particular thing i just think it is a slightly different approach in the UK, our, our approach to teaching. Um, the things I mentioned, those kind of independent um, study skills, I would say, well, my advice would be really don't be shy about asking for help. You know, we want our students to do well and it's not going to, I think particularly if students are on a scholarship, perhaps they're a bit nervous about asking for help if they're struggling with academic studies or, you know, feeling homesick or that kind of thing. So I just really encourage students to, um, you know, chat to their fellow classmates, chat to their academic staff, their personal tutor, the wellbeing team, the academic support team. So if you are having any issues at all, um, really feel that you can speak to us really early on before it becomes a bigger problem. I think most students are absolutely fine. Um, but um, yeah, definitely don't be afraid. All these facilities and teams are there, are there to help you. Um, and I'd also just really encourage students to, you know, be open to opportunities, get involved in clubs and societies, make friends with the Indonesian society as well as all the others and just, yeah, really get involved in things and enjoy your time. It will be a bit of a learning curve for sure. Um, you know, managing your time, making sure your academic studies come first and, and balancing everything. Um, the weather could be a bit of a challenge as well. <laughs> That's definitely a bit of a, bit of a shock there. Um, but yeah, I think we are lucky in London as well, being, having that central London location and that, you know, it's very international, lots of opportunities for you to get um, Indonesian food, which I love as well. Um, so, yeah, just don't be afraid to ask for help and, and get involved in as, in as much as you can. Okay, that's so helpful. Uh, 
unfortunately we are, are very short on time. Uh, can you tell us uh, your website, email or anything if our watchers want to approach? Absolutely. So um, the main UCL website is just ucl.ac.uk. Um, and on the homepage, there is the link to our prospectus, which is where all of the program information that we talked about is. It's really easy to navigate all the programs, the tuition fees, how to apply, that kind of thing. Um, please do reach out to our team at any time, any questions you might have. And the email address is study at ucl.ac.uk. And then me and a few colleagues will be at the EHEF there for the next couple of days. Um, so yeah, really please do come along and chat to us, ask us all your questions and yeah, we'll be really happy to help you. Okay, thank you. That's the end of our Q&A session. Just a reminder, we, you can connect later on uh, to the website of UCL. Thank you so much, Ms. Hey, Hannah. Lekko. Thank yeah. you and thank you for moderating. Great job, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to remind you all that there's going to be a virtual fair this Friday and Saturday. You'll be able to consult directly and ask for their information related to your study. Finally, access event.ehef.id. All the information will be there. Bye for now, and we'll see you again later on.